How much money do I have? Oh, hey, what's up? A cadaverous husk materializes in front of you, unfolding like a flower from a nothingness into being. It stands with a surprisingly upright posture, and you can see that its robes were once of fine quality. It raises a hand to block your path. Stop. The thing's voice comes out in a hollow rasp. Something about it feels empty. It seems you can move freely through this realm, coming and going, taking what is not yours. What, who are you? I was an assistant to a great man. An emperor. I was meant to continue assisting him in the afterlife, but something wasn't settled. Bonds were broken, he is no longer here, and I wish to search for him elsewhere. Oh, hey, do we have a party member? I want out of his tomb. I must free myself from this place, but I cannot leave. My soul is bound within these catacombs, chained to the bones of a life that I no longer possess. And you think I can get you out of here somehow? You can. Slowly, painfully, the mummy inclines its head. It reaches into the folds of its robes and produces a ring of fired porcelain. It extends its arms, arm, presenting the object as an offering. Take this talisman and place it among the other artifacts you have removed. Once you have moved it beyond the binding threshold of this excavation, I will be free. Okay, let's say I do this. What's in it for me? The sure knowledge that you have done what is right. And how do I know I can trust you? You don't. How could you? But I am a man of my word. Well, we have to do a little bit better than that. When I am free, I will give you a thing, a token. Crumble it in your hands, and I will come to your aid, but only once. One time, and no more. Mommy's eyeless sockets seem to stare into you, through you. Will this be sufficient, troll? Will you accept my offer? Sure, no problem. Thank you. Mummy inclines its head. I will be forever in your debt. <laughs> I mean, what can go wrong with freeing an ancient spirit? What can go wrong? Terminal was powered off. This is the one. Flip the switch on the bottom right. Then plug my data chip. The script will doctor the security log so we can sneak you out. Okay. It's executing now. There's a pause, you can hear him clicking his tongue like a metronome. And done. Get out of there. Oh, that's it? Okay. Feels like I'm gonna be attacked here, but uh. I hope not. I mean there is a there is a ley line here. And there's a locked door here. Yep. More or less what I thought. Buckle up. Everything got locked except this. Okay. Okay, let's let's take better positions. Which is honestly a little bit difficult. Hey, she's uh doing okay. Well, I got hasted, right? I guess I don't have the haste right now. Uh, this is fine. Okay, so I can get to them in uh, one turn. That's annoying. But they don't have any... Wait, line of sight is blocked? How dare you. do this and I can throw a uh, <laughs> throw a knife at you. 
she can do poison fog. Kind of far away. That's good there. Uh, you got three armor, yeah? You can rent some armor. Okay. Now I can punch you, like, two more times. Honestly, there's no reason for me not to do this. Oh, we missed. Oh, that sucks. But she's dead because she, uh, because she bled out. Uh, that's gonna use two points, but that's gonna kill him. Oh, unless we miss, yeah. Mr. a familiar voice pops up in your communicator. Change your plans. Search those bodies for a key fob. Don't need it to access the side door. What side door? In the lobby. My program didn't work as well as I'd expected. I'll be monitoring the exits on my cameras and the HKPF of the front locked down. Since you can go out the front, you got to exit to the side. A key will get you through this through the locked side door that will take you out the east service exit. Okay, let me uh Let me actually increase the volume a little bit. Um, okay, for a second I couldn't move anything. More combat here. Yeah. Uh, I actually go this way. Yeah. Yeah, here. Oh, god, damage. That's a sniper rifle, isn't it? Well, you can attack this guy. He's flanked with this, even. Uh, she can haste me. Would be nice if I could stand here and attack her. Oh, let's see. Wait, really? It's fine. Uh... Do some overwatch this way. She is bleeding out. You heal me, please. I want to heal. Oh shit. He is wounded. 
it's just that you have to... Uh... Okay, go here, now we have Linus on here. Okay, now we should probably have a thing here, so... Yeah, we did get rid of some of our EP. And we did take her out to cover, so... Let's see... That was worth it. And hopefully we can actually hit him here. Nope, couldn't. Oh, he decided to attack there. Oh, you're gonna regret this. Why did you ignore the like 3 meter troll behind you? I mean, I guess that's because we're, uh, we're playing on normal. Pretty sure they wouldn't ignore him. No big fist. If uh... Uh, they wouldn't ignore him if I was playing on harder difficulties. Here we go. Adrenaline. Your adrenaline wanes as you fly through the subway tunnels on your way back to Heoi. There isn't much left to do but pick the shards of glass off your clothes and congratulate yourself on one hell of a run. It's just too bad you couldn't keep the looted antiques. By the end, you'd manage to steal over 10,000 new yen worth of items for your clients. A number of that will hopefully be reflected on your mission pay. The damage you caused will likely set the museum's development back even farther. Not even, not enough to cripple the project, just enough to send a message. But at the end of the day, you still managed to break a lot of exhibits, displays, and even the faces of a few tomb, crawl tomb crawlers. The presence of which had conveniently slipped Drake's mind. Surprises aside, you came out on top, and thanks to some quick thinking on Drake's part, you got the books, and you got out. We got 8 karma. Optional is get some rest. I'm probably gonna need to get some rest in order to, uh, to... Steven Dynamite. Didn't see him there before. Maybe maybe we got some more stuff to buy. Because there's this is fully unexplored yet. Smuggler. Hello Spider Shen. Shen is busily counting out crit sticks as you approach. Shen's hands move quickly. Fingers deftly sorting them into small plastic bins. The labels on the bins were bear names. Steel Arm Lu. Grandfather Wo, Loki Ping, and Kindly Chen. Chen's eyes flicker up at you for a fraction of a second before returning to the task. One moment. I will be done shortly. A few last flicks of a wrist. See the final cred sticks sorted in the respective bin. With the lion's share going to Kindly and Steel Arm Lu. There. Now what can I do for you? You pay a lot of dues to the Yellow Lotus? Chen shrugs, obviously indifferent to the amount of the shops being taxed. I do. Well, that's how the system works. I pay kindly for rent. Dear Arm Lu gets money because he's my superior. Lucky Ping receives a finder's fee for goods she sends my way. And Grandfather Wo took me in. He gets paid because he's family, and I owe him for getting me off the streets. Join the organization, you have to pay the dues. It's the same as anywhere else, and it beats the hell out of being homeless in Kowloon. Stuffing the boxes away below the counter, Shen produces a box of assorted needles and inks. He begins cataloging them on a battered PDA. And you don't mind paying? Not really. Grandfather Wo saved my life by taking the yen, you know. Life expectancy for homeless kids in Aberdeen isn't very good. Because of him, I have skills and friends. Who pay to make use of them. It's a good life, all things considered. Chen leans back against a stack, of, a stack of cages, causing the snakes within to hiss and snap at the glass. I'm just a blue lantern, a foot soldier. I answer to White Ming, who I studied with on Wudang Mountain. He's the 49er, made the man 
the maid man who runs our crew. I can pay him because he takes his own cut of what we make. Okay, what do you have for sale? We get something new. A nerve strike and mana fist. We already have those, so we, there's nothing new here, unfortunately. I mean, it would be nice to get a katana, but uh, I'm not really sure. No, I don't think we actually got anything new. It's just some some guys available. Well, let's look at the computer. Oh yeah, I should probably uh, I should probably rest first. That's a op optional requirement. I should go for strength too. For now, at least. Bonded spell. Killing hands in stride. Oh, so there's like a bonded spell that adds these two together? Okay. Well, I do think we should probably increase... Increase you, maybe. Let's do it like this. One point in strength. And one point in willpower. For now. Let's get some sleep first. You wake with a start, your limbs bound up in a sweaty tangle of linen bed sheets. An incredible sorrow swells in your chest. You feel empty, half starved and alone. Fragmentary memories of a half remembered dream flit through your minds. They're already fading away to nothing. Let's chase the memories. You close your eyes and concentrate, willing yourself to keep the dream from slipping away. Gradually, the memory comes back to you. The walled city. You were back in the walled city. You don't remember how you got there, but it couldn't have been any place else. Even the barons weren't so squalid. You remember craning your neck to look above you. The buildings that made up this part of a walled city were a new construction, even cheaper than the old. Now their foundations had rotted out from under them, and the buildings leaned into one another like a gang of drunken men. A rain of plastic and asbestos sprinkled down, dusting your shoulders. You began to creep forward, picking your way past the piles of refuse and debris, past the pimps and the dumpster fires, the broken glass and the dirty needles. The air reeked of rot and sewage and industrial waste and a disgusting melange that caught in your sinuses and crawled down your throat. You gagged on the stink, but it didn't slow you down. In the back of your mind, you knew that you had no reason to be doing this. There was nothing for you in the world city. You shouldn't have been there. But the rest of you was hungry. Unbearably, indescribably hungry. And that part of you knew that if you kept moving, you'd finally get to eat. As you forced your way deeper into the world city, locals stood at their windows and stared. Inexplicably, some of them dropped to their knees. You kept moving. You could see something in the distance. A silhouette. Something enormous, at least twice the size of a troll, but delicate. It was beautiful. The huge figure beckoned you, gesturing with slender limbs. An explosion of warmth filled your chest and you knew that if only you could reach it, your problems would be over. It, she, would make all of your sorrows disappear. You moved forward at a crawl, but the figure felt impossibly far away. You reached out calling to her and and then you woke up the empty feeling in your stomach slowly fades taking the strength and vibrance of the memories along with it mission computer the workstation and mission computer the cool blue tones are the workstation's main menu fill the screen let me just drink something A 
blink message in the upper right corner notifies you that you have two unread messages. Let's read the messages. Attending a party. From Kangli Cheng to Fist. Attending a party. Fist. I need you to come to the parlor. A friend and business partner of mine named Dr. Shen Yang has need of your assistance. Something about attending a fancy party in Repulse Bay. He was unwilling to give me the details. I think he wanted to size you up himself. From Isabel to Fist, Raymond Black's history. Duncan asked me to do some digging on my own into Raymond's history. I guess he doesn't trust kindly Cheng to give him the full story. I can't say I blame him, since she'd hide things from us if it was in her best interest to do so. I've been poking around various corners of the Matrix, trying to dig up what I can. Most sinners leave a data trail the size of an aircraft carrier in their wake. Working backwards in time, Raymond starts out that way, but it will slowly tapers away into nothingness. Sure, I can find some basic records in Seattle. Power, utilities, a couple of public discussion sites he signs up for. But the further back I get, the less I find. And the craziest part is this. Prior to 2032, I can't find anything at all, and that shouldn't be possible. It's like Raymond didn't exist before then. I don't know, I'm going to keep digging, but it's t it'll take me a while. I'll let you know when I get some news worth sharing. Other jobs, and claim the payment for the museum run. You submit the job as finished and await the response. A few moments later, a message pops into the screen. The fist. Oh, John, you went above and beyond what I asked, and liberated some truly precious artifacts. I've attached the payment you're owed, plus a little bonus. I trust you'll keep quiet about what exactly was liberated from Liu's little museum. I'll come collect the books from Kindly Cheng shortly. Okay, what about the Shadowlands BBS? Can we post the uh, shipping manifest? Yes. Keywords. Police shoot out in Victoria Harbour. I know a lot of you are interested in that 50,000 New Yen the Hong Kong Police Force is promising in connection with the terrorist cell they're hunting. So I've been digging around for some better information. I think I've got some stuff of value. Worth rat. Turns out they had a handler here in Hong Kong by the name of Raymond Black. The Hong Kong Police Force tried to take him into custody the day before but were forced to kill him in a shootout. Looks like Black and the terrorists are members of the White Star Group out of Henan. Oh, out of Henan. Isn't White Star all about restoring Imperial China? One of those terrorists they killed was obviously North American. Why would she be helping a pro-imperialist group, Brother Six? You got money, you can buy any kind of person you need. You're on Shadowlands, am I? <laughs> you should know that. Bang Huang. So what do we know about Black and his band of thugs? Anything we can use anything we can use to track them down? Dong Jiang. The data I've been able to dig up says that Black was from Henan and was distantly related to the royal royal family. He spent a couple of decades in Seattle making connections on the shadows in preparation for an attack on the Free Enterprise Zone. I've attached some dossiers on his remaining agents. Rolling Thunder. You sift through a long stream of data detailing who you and Duncan are. While the general details about your name and life are correct, many of the small details are wildly inaccurate. You are listed as having lived in Laos for the past four years, while Duncan is noted as having spent most of his life in prison. You move on to peruse Gobbett and Isabel's ostensible biographies. The dossier lists Gobbett's real name as Yu Chun Gui and her place of birth as Xi'an, Shangxi. According to the contents, she is 23 years old and served with the Baihu corporate military until the conviction for insubordination led to her dishonorable discharge. While well, you can't be certain Gobbett doesn't speak Mandarin, the idea of her being in the military, any military, is downright laughable. Isabel, in turn, is listed as Fatima Abuka. Apparently, Isabel was educated at an early age in terrorism and piracy by the revolutionaries of the Ifumalian 
territories and is wanted in connection with the bombing 2052 bomb attack on the French embassy in uh, Johannesburg. Given that you know that Isabel grew up here in Hong Kong, this information appears to be laughably inaccurate as your own dossier. Hey, Posey Bash. Alright, folks, we're trying it again, this time under a super secret code name. There's no telling how long this will last, so let the bash begin. Matrix Barn. Super. Super secret code name? You just ran the words Poetry Bash to a thesaurus. Poetry people, not complaints. A thief on the run, a silencer in the dark, the rat shaman lurks. Giant threat. Oh. Wait, did I get disconnected for a second? No, it's fine. I wonder for the coyote shamans too. An unboned trickster. The shaman fears no peril. Will he wily coyote? Dive for it. And a rogue jivey. There's another one, if man can stand it. Forces of light glance of bright chrome, translucent spheres and case my treasure, mirrors and tubes and neon implode another day in the matrix. It was kinda bad, I didn't like it. Anison. Hey, I can do traditional, I can I happen to prefer the haiku. Because less typing. The summer dresses infinity in your gaze. Very pointy ears. Now you're mad. Extra points for using your summer correctly in a sentence. I like elves. Divert is still the master of the haiku. In fact, oh graveyard keeper, Asian skin, spindly fingers, and claws freak me out. <laughs> Divert. Alright, Shakespeare's, this is strike two. This thread is getting locked, and you aren't doing this again, got me? This board is for deckers who want to talk shop. There are plenty of other forums that you can use for your stupid amateur poetry. I'd suggest that you go find one. Okay, top shelf sublet, available immediately. Like the title says, good location, cheap rent, serious offers only, please. Harbor rat. What do you mean by top shelf, as in fancy corporate condo? How do you manage that? No man, it's really the top shelf in the converted maintenance closet I live in. Oh, I thought Harbor Rat would be a uh, gobbit. You're joking. No joke, it's cheap and the location's good, right near the Temple Street night market. And it has super fast access, just in case you need to get in and out of a matrix quick. I'm not the sort to ask questions, there's just about enough space to stretch out your legs lying down, and there's a ceiling hook for your gear, what do you say? I don't know, I need a place, but so... A shelf in a shared closet? Screw that, I've got a sweet pad rent that you can have all to yourself, it's not Victoria Peak or anything, but it's a bargain. Where's it at? Colin Walt City, it's one of the new construction units on the outer edge. Hotspots 888. I'll throw in a second ceiling hook. Deal? Okay, message me and we'll work out the nitty gritty. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to. They don't want to live in the world city, do they? Seriously, the world city isn't that bad. My apartment is huge and it even has windows. I'll bet Harbor Rats rent. In fact, I'll beat Harbor Rats rent. In fact, just tell me what you want to pay. Hello. Thread looking for Decker. Looking for experienced deck help for a discreet milk run to, on a supply house for purveyors of recreational substances. Potential for a longer term arrangement. We're a team that's been together for years, running your basic heists and the occasional transport gig. We've got a reliable fixer and long list of happy clients. Requirement? You must have a good sense of humor. Give me some new yen 888. Hey, are you willing to give a newbie a shot? I've been in and out of Matrix since I was in school. I risked some creds doing odd jobs, so I've got a hot new cyber deck that I'm itching to try in the real run. I don't know, man. We'd really, really like to find a long-term decker. So I kind of don't know shit. And you kind of don't know shit. You said so yourself, sorry. Aw, oh, come on. I'm a zoom. You said it was a milk run. How else would a Shadowrunner start if not with an easy gig? I'm being upfront with you. Doesn't that count for something? Fine, I'll get a test for you. You hack this guy, Captain's Cone, and change his passwords to erotic, <laughs> erotic Massage. I'm on it, thanks. Done. Am I in or what? Say yes, say yes. What the fuck? Amazon, may I introduce you to our rigger? Captain's Cone, you'll make a fine addition to our team. Thank you, you won't regret this. 
You gotta stop getting people to hack me, gimme. Or you'll be looking for a new rigger next. Oh, you know what day you love me. Okay. Supposed to f uh, talk to Kindly Cheng's friends. I should also go and see if I can sell the Simpsons chip. I think it's gonna be the guy that sells some technological stuff. So let's go here. Maximum law. Overhead, a gigantic hollow sign shines like a searchlight, streaming its message through the dim light. It hums and flickers, sputtering like an old engine. Fierce electrical crackles sporadically burst out of a sign's emitter, stabbing your eyes and filling your ears with static. Under, under the baleful glare of the sign, a rusty minibarge's deck is stacked with electronics. Lapidated stereos share space with crispy boxed servos. Ranks of discs and memory chips fill display cases padlocked on the plexiglass. A short human in his late twenties stands in the middle, hands on his hips, talking loudly into the air. Bulky virtual reality goggles cover his eyes. A data jack cable runs from his temples, temple down his stained t-shirt to a belt load of clearly home-built computer hardware. No, I'm telling you. His voice is shrill, clipped. Nobody uses KM3s. Like, nobody. They're shit. I don't care what Dane says. If Showa SRP uses KM3s, they're stupid. Hey, flesh is rolling up. I gotta go. He turns to face you. Goggles blank and enigmatic. Blinking with tiny lights and wrapped in duct tape. Points at your PDA. I'll rip that PDA. You work for kindly. His lips work impatiently. Yo, what do you want? Uh, who are you? Observe this wine as two lenses on this Google zoom in on you. Who am I? You're new here, I don't, I get it. You don't know about me, yet. But you will. I'm one of the guys that keeps this neighborhood running. This is Law's Technology Palace, satellite territory of one power. You step on the boat, you're in a sovereign state. I represent one power here, I'm maximum law. He draws himself up proudly, setting his hands on his hips. The maximum law, yo. You got a tech problem? Boom, I solve it. You need software? Boom, done. Don't want waste, but don't waste my time. So you got any business in one power right now? If not, keep moving. Uh, first of all, uh, show me what you got. Some cyber decks, some outfits. Interestingly enough, all of the outfits we can buy, so far that I've seen, have three points of armor. Well, I find this while poking around in the walled city. Worth anything? Scans the chip's casing with a handheld optical reader. Yo, the shit is banned! Lifted off some yellow lotus, they traffic this stuff. The delimited SIM chips, full sensory experience. Looking for a buyer? I can make it happen. How's 120 sound? Sure, whatever, it's fine. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll sample it first. But those Calhots can send you for a trip. Don't worry, I can handle my sims. Okay, bye bye. You gotta go? Okay, watch your back and shoot straight and all. Bill grins at you and dexterously flashes a hand sign that shadowrunners give each other in Hollowbridge shows. I've got things to do too. 